Hey guys, welcome back to our intro to compositing in After Effects tutorial series. And this is our second of three parts to learn how to composite. Let's take a look. So for today, we're going to be trying to piece together a shot that will help tie this car chase sequence together, right? Let's take a look at the shots, the way the sequence rolls out. We press play, we see the cars driving, get some interior shots, we'll worry about that later, right? But if we go to here, we see this driving shot and then this window shot right these are the two shots we're gonna be focusing on today as you can see it's snowing in this shot right lots going on but we cut to this shot and there's no snow right not a lot of dynamic movement and it becomes a little bit confusing to see if they're in the same place or not so what we're gonna do is we're gonna add some snow and we're gonna add the gun effects the muzzle flashes to add a little bit of a cool hollywood stylized look should be pretty simple so let's head on into after effects and check it out Okay, now, once you've opened After Effects, let's create a new project, and we're going to import our footage. Let's do it the long way this time. Import, file, let's go to our desktop, and find where your footage is. The stuff you've downloaded for the last tutorial. Now, let's go to our second one, intro to assets. We're going to take the clip, right? We double open, we've imported the clip, right? Shooting out the window, and it's imported. Now, while we're in After Effects, if we double click it open, we can now view the shot into this new window and this viewing or clip monitor opens up and we can take a look. And this is our whole clip, right? It's a little bit longer. Of course, we wanna trim it down a bit, especially because in the beginning we can see a lot over his shoulder and we can see the trees and you know that we're not actually moving and we're just sitting in the driveway. But let's take a look at what's the clip that we're gonna be replacing it with. The final should look like this. Pretty cool, right? We're adding the snow. We're adding the VFX assets of the muzzle flashes and should be pretty cool. Let's start. So we're going to bring our clip, drag it like we did last time, create a new composition. Now, an important thing I did mention last time, but I want you all to keep being aware of is make sure you are knowing which window you have selected so that you know what you're doing and where you're doing it. First things first, let's do what we did last time. Let's trim it and we want to trim it to um, one second in. So we can do this, let's go 24 frames in. We're at the one second mark, drag it in. Second time at the 21 second mark. The keyboard shortcut we learned last time, Command Shift D, delete that top part. Let's now, there's a keyboard shortcut, right, to removing the space. If we click B, it does the top end. If we click N, it does the bottom end. Command Shift X, boom, our timeline is now just this part of the clip. And you know, it looks pretty cool. Uh, but it's missing the assets, missing the effects. The biggest thing I want to introduce to you guys today are assets. Assets are a big part of visual effects and compositing because they really help tie stuff together and tie these visual elements that we add later to make shots better. Like if we want to add a dinosaur into a shot, if we add some dust, we add some smoke, that can help make it look a little more realistic. So we're going to go into our Intro to Assets folder, and you can see here I have included an Assets folder. We open that we have a bunch of blizzard stuff right we have snow assets which will work perfectly and we have muzzle flashes which we can't really open because dot mov files have some sort of weird thing with apple but we're going to take all of our assets we're going to bring it into after effects and import it cool now from here i always like to add all my assets into a bin so i click it them all i drag and drop with them all selected and boom title this folder assets so every single asset that i'm doing will be brought in all right let's focus on the muzzle flashes first now that we have our assets imported if we click on an asset right we double click it we can view it right in the footage monitor that's what it's called footage monitor sorry now from here this one's pretty cool i like this one right we get the flash we get the smoke and that should be pretty cool let's drag it into our composition we can drag it to the timeline or we can drag it right onto the clip and let's find the moment where he shoots and that seems about right. Boom, here, before he starts lifting. Another important thing that will probably help is to use the keyboard, uh, the keyboard shortcut to go frame by frame. You hold command and you click the arrow keys to go frame by frame. So if we're going frame by frame, we're going through, this one's the shot, the frame before he starts lifting the gun. Let's pull this back so it starts then. Okay, now from here, the way we can move stuff, right? Because we need to be able to move it. We can click right on the file and move it like this right right in the composition if we take a look at this this is how we can transform it um, manually which can be very helpful if we see we got these these little squares here this shows us the dimensions of the file if we select this clip as well we can move it too you can see 
the box shows us the dimensions of this video clip. Should be pretty simple. Now, this little thing in the middle here is the anchor point. And basically, any transformation that we do will happen around this center point. Sometimes if you need to, it's important to move that anchor point, right? And we can do that by grabbing the pan behind tool or the anchor point tool, either clicking up here or we click the Y key. And this allows us to move this anchor point and we can shift it right into the middle of the effect. And now when we move it, it moves around there. We can do three types of transformations. Uh, we can translate its position, we can rotate it, or we can scale it. We're translating it by moving it, or we can use the rotate tool, which is clicking up here by clicking W. See, we select it and we can rotate it however we want. Cool. We're gonna scale it. We can scale it by clicking one of these corners and see it changes now the dimensions and the size. If we hold shift, that makes it hold. And like, as you can see, as we said before, everything, whoop, everything happens around, whoop, selected both, sorry. Everything happens around the anchor point. Now we're gonna scale it up Muzzle flashes should be about the size of the person's head. So we're going to put it like that, put it there, scale it up to there, holding the shift key. Maybe we'll squeeze it a little bit so it looks a little bit more three-dimensional. Place it right on the barrel, and boom. Play it. Looks okay. Doesn't look as good as we can get it, so let's try to blend it a little bit better. Now, the dimensions are a little off, right, because he's holding the gun sideways, so maybe we should be seeing some more of the flash going this way. So I included some more assets. Let's double click. This one looks pretty good. We're going to bring in this one. Drag it onto the composition. We'll drag it so it starts at the same time. We'll scale it and position it maybe a little bit smaller. We'll rotate it so it looks like it's coming in the right direction. Sorry, let's just move the anchor point. Remember, we click Y, move the anchor point here. So we're rotating around this point. But now, as you can see, what problem are we facing? Looks a little funky. Colors aren't the same, so now they're blending. So we're going to go to something that's really helpful over here in the timeline and on our source files and our layer files called blend modes. We go this, we can click that we got this drop down of all different sort of ways that we can blend these different layers together. We try different ones, dissolve, looks a little weird, right? Does some interesting love classic color burn. Ooh, does something like that. Now the ones that we're gonna use are add and screen, but we want add. Add gives it the best sort of glow look and it blends it. You can see that difference. Now all the white, all the highlights have been blended and everything that's dark, it's not visible anymore. Now that now that we can see it this way, we can reposition it a little bit. We're gonna scale this in a tad and I want to grab select the first one. Make sure it's important you know what you're selecting because if I don't deselect I'll just keep moving the same one if I want to move the other one and we can place it yeah, I think that looks pretty good like that. Now, sorry, if you can see sometimes I move something and then it like jumps back, that's because I'm clicking the undo button. Now the undo should be the same for everyone and I think it should be self-explanatory. It's always command Z. Cool, cool, cool. From here, if we take a look. That already looks a lot better now that it's blended better into the scene using the blend modes. Only problem is it kind of floats there. Now if the card's driving, it should be going crazy fast. So what we're going to do is we can select both of them, which is very helpful. We can either click this drop the menu and we're going to go to transform or we can just click P because we want to worry about the positioning, right? We can also use these sliders to move where our element is in the composition, but we're going to use keyframes. Okay. And I think we all should remember what keyframes are. Should be pretty simple, right? Keyframes will help us animate the positioning rotation scale or whatever parameter we want to change over time. So we added a first keyframe at the beginning. We want to go forward a frame. The smoke, if we're driving, right, should trail off this way. So what we're going to do is with this keyframe here, let's go eight frames. I think eight frames look good. One, two, oh, auto save there. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Add a second keyframe by just dragging. And as you can see, you can see these are the frames here that After Effects has created to move this element over the course of these eight frames from here all the way. Now we'll go all the way off screen. Okay. And I think that should look pretty good. We take a look. Bang, bang. Looks good. But I think it moves a little fast. So what I would tend to do is we duplicate these frames by selecting them. We can box select or click select by clicking click. And then we shift click. We command C. Let's copy it and let's paste it in the frame. Oh, sorry, I think we can only do it one at a time. We'll copy it and we'll paste it. I don't know why that wasn't working that way. That's okay, we'll copy and paste those frames. Make sure we have the right thing selected so the smoke stays at the barrel of the gun and then it flies off. And that looks 
pretty cool. Only problem, it looks a little stiff. So let's just add some motion blur. Let's click down here. We go to toggle switches. Close this. We don't need... Oops, I clicked the wrong tool. I got the hand tool open by clicking H accidentally. Um, but we don't need that. The hand tool helps us move the screen without moving anything. Um, but we don't necessarily need that right now. Let's just reset. Speaking of reset, this tab here really helps you. Comes in handy, right? We scroll. We can make it bigger and smaller. And if we want to zoom in, we can. And we click it can fit up to 200. This one's a nice one, fit, because it fits whatever size screen you have. You can go through, just remember that that's there. Back to motion blur, right? So it looks a little less stiff. We grab this little icon here, which is the motion blur, and we click it and click it. Now, as you can see, it blurs it. Bang, bang. You can do this muzzle flash effect on anywhere else that seems fit. I'm gonna leave one for now, but if you wanna play with it, he shoots a few times. It's kinda like an automatic rifle, so that should be should be open for um, interpretation there. Now let's quickly get the snow in. Now, I think close snow five is the one we wanna go with. Yep, looks good. We're gonna select it, we're gonna drag it into the composition. Now I don't necessarily like doing that because as you can see, you can place it anywhere. So that's why I like dragging it here into the timeline so that it's symmetrical and plays perfectly. But oh no, why is it a black screen? You may be asking. Well, that's because this specific file, this specific asset, gives us this snow element, but it's on a black screen. A lot of the time this may be a pain, but it is actually pretty simple and actually will help it blend better into the scene. First, let's just drag this, let's select it so that we have the snow starting earlier, right? We don't want there to be no snow at the beginning. Let's go to the scale and we want it to be about there, maybe 73%. Now, we want to flip it. Now, we can do this manually by selecting one edge and pulling it across like this. Or we can do it down here by turning off this tool and typing negative 73 in the x-axis and locking it again. And now it's flipped. Go in the opposite direction. If I don't click this, we undo, undo. If I don't click this and I click negative 73, uh, it flips everything. And now the snow is going upwards. Little bit of a problem. That's why we want to uncheck the lock parameters there snow is falling in the correct direction. Now how do we get rid of the black background? This is where we use blend modes again. We can go to blend mode and we want to do screen this time. And now as we can see, already looks pretty cool. And now we have our final shot. And of course you can go in and add more muzzle flashes if you would like, but for the sake of the tutorial, we'll leave it at that. If um, you want to do something a little bit more advanced, right, we can see back in Premiere Pro that the clip doesn't necessarily match perfectly because the cameras were a little bit different, right? Different time of day. It's a little bluer here, and it's very solid, like, even colors there, very black. So what we can do, we can select our base layer. We go to the Effects and Presets window, and let's search Lumetry. Lumetry is the same thing that's in Premiere Pro. Now up here to the Effects Controls window, we go to the Basic Correction. We turn the temperature down a tad. Let's just go negative 20 should look good maybe even negative 25 right if we toggle it with this little button here on and off it kind of pulls everything together a little bit more we have a nice shot here make sure from here we can save so let's go command s we want to title this one again bring it so it's with the footage in the lesson 2 intro to assets folder and we want to title it 2022 underscore 3.2 intro to assets and save. Saving is very important. From here, you can export the final shot. I hope you learned something new. Just a quick recap, right? Today we learned about assets and how assets are a very simple way of creating more complex and more cool shots. It can help us tie different elements together, not just in a single shot, but for example, in the whole sequence, it can tie the first shot to the second shot. We also learned about blend modes. We learned about the transform tools, which we can either affect down here, right? We got anchor point, position, scale, rotation and opacity, which opacity is it's, its visibility. We learned about keyframes. If we click the P button, that opens this and how they can help us animate different elements in a, in a composition. And we learned about a little bit of color correction and how sometimes color correction is the last step to combining um, elements of a shot. All right, I hope you learned something in this tutorial and I will see you in the next one.